At the introduction of the 2014-2015 Toyota Mirai in Japan, company officials boldly argued that we'd reached a turning point in the history of the automobile. That was a bit of bluster, but forgivable. Truth is, the Mirai, which means future in Japanese, was and remains less a turning point than the next step in Enviro cars. Green cars that make business sense, as well as political and environmental sense. You see, Toyota was working on fuel cell cars as far back as 1992. A fuel cell powered Highlander SUV came in 2002. These and others were prototypes, test vehicles, but they allowed Toyota to log millions of kilometers of testing. Why hydrogen? Why fuel cells? It all makes sense for a Japanese automaker. Japan imports nearly 100% of its oil. The country has been forever dogged by energy dependence. A switch to a hydrogen economy, away from carbon, away from oil, natural gas, and coal, is not just good for the environment, but it's also good for customers and regulators who care and want to act on human-caused climate change. It also moves Japan and Toyota away from a dependence on carbon imports which have forever plagued Japan's industrial plans and policies. Hydrogen is not an energy source, but an energy carrier. It can be produced through steam reforming, gasification, or electrolysis. And many have argued it should be harnessed to provide power for everything from cars to buildings to spaceships. And so this brings us to the Mirai. The Mirai, to be quite honest, is a demonstration vehicle. Fuel cells are the future as far as Toyota is concerned for zero emissions free driving. And it's a real car. Toyota has delivered some 10,000 Mirais to real world customers. But the Mirai I tested is old, old news. Toyota won't be handing over many versions of this generation Mirai, not anytime soon, because a new and updated one is on its way. An advanced concept version of the second gen Mirai was shown in late 2019 at Tokyo's Motor Show. The exterior design is sleeker, less choppy. The cabin is more refined and appealing and it has a big 12.3 inch widescreen on the center console and instrument panel. There is room inside for five instead of four, and the fuel cell system has been improved. Acceleration, we're told, is more linear and responsive. Handling is less clunky, and the new Mirai, says Toyota, will go 30% further on a single fill-up. It looks like a big jump forward compared to my first generation Mirai tester. The car's readout told me I had a range of about 360 kilometers on a full tank of hydrogen. This Mirai, as I said, seats four, has a small trunk, and zips from zero to 100 kilometers in about 10 seconds. Doing so while making almost no noise at all. The Mirai is a pure electric vehicle, but there's no battery pack, no lithium ion array, which requires a lot of cooling. So what's at work under the skin? Well, fuel cell cars like the Mirai have an electric motor driven by electricity created by an electrochemical reaction. The hydrogen stored on board in robust tanks mixes with oxygen inside the fuel cell to create electricity which then combines with hundreds of other cells in a fuel cell stack. The only byproduct is water. The hydrogen tanks are refueled in about three minutes in a manner very similar to filling up with gas or diesel. In concept, it's all pretty straightforward. But integrating high pressure tanks, fuel cells in the stack, the converter, and oxygen supply, and keeping it all cool and safe then putting the electricity to work through an electric motor, well, controlling the various systems and the power created here requires a lot of software and hardware and even expensive precious metals. 
Toyota argues that the small stack here tucks neatly below the front seats, lowering the center of gravity and improving handling. The car still feels heavy in driving, and when you climb aboard, it's obvious there is something under the elevated seats. By the way, the water emissions don't spew from a traditional tailpipe. Water emissions are released with this switch. Globally, Toyota has not produced more than about 3,000 Mirais a year. That's for everybody in the world. Ah, but by 2021, the idea here is that the next generation Mirai, Toyota plans to produce perhaps 30,000 or more. That's when we start getting into volume production and the dream of a fuel cell car starts to become something of a reality. Skeptics contend that Toyota is gaming the marketplace here, that it's touting fuel cells so that it can really stick to selling traditional internal combustion engine vehicles and hybrids. They argue, well, they argue that the technology is 10 years behind the latest battery electric cars, and there is almost no place to fill up with hydrogen. You might be among those who scoff at the very idea of a fuel cell car uh, being mainstream transportation anytime in anybody's lifetime. Uh, Tesla's Elon Musk, for example, calls fuel cells fool cells, perhaps. I will say my Mirai tester was a perfectly pleasant and very quiet sedan. This is not a science project, and I don't think it's a scam or a dodge by Toyota. Today, Toyota, and the Hyundai Motor Group in particular, along with perhaps Honda, um, have really decided that the future of green driving will be part of a broader hydrogen economy. Fuel cells fit into the overall national goal, but what matters here is Toyota is the biggest, most profitable car company in the world and has the money to make a vision a reality. If Toyota wants fuel cells to happen, they will. How successful this venture will be will depend entirely on how consumers react. demonstration vehicle, the Mirai. Ooh, there's a truck over there. Toyota has been produced. It's 2020 this year. Uh,